Um, so hello everyone, uh, my name is Tortko, I'm a software developer at uh, ERT and I'm really excited to show you what we have been working on for the past uh, couple of months. So it's a Python framework for, communicate, for easier communication with uh, Kafka uh, topics. So a bit about our motivation first. Um, so we are working with uh, a customer that needed a model to predict the churn possibility of uh, their customers. Um, so we, de we developed the model for them. And our model can, as any other uh, model, can generate some predictions. And the issue was uh, we, need to uh, we need to deploy it. And uh, the first uh, iteration was uh, we decided to deploy it using fast API. So it's a quite uh, simple process. We just wrap our model in, into a get uh, function and you can uh, access it over REST. So you put your uh, message and you get uh, back the prediction of the churn possibility of, of the customer. But uh, the issue was the customer, our customer, uh, decide they want to switch from REST uh, to a messaging queue and they decided to use Kafka. So we needed to uh, like change change our uh, model of uh, uh, of, of uh, how to how to expose our model to them. And uh, fast API for us was uh, quite a beautiful thing because uh, we need we didn't need to do uh, much implementation uh, besides our model. We just needed to wrap it inside a function that gets the input data. It uh, tosses out a prediction and the fast API takes care of the message routing, takes care of the decoding of the input data and uh, encoding of the output data. So we decided, uh, yep, the connecting to Kafka shouldn't be a big deal. We just find something that works like fast API. So we'll change the app to some Kafka framework dot application. And uh, so the Kafka has uh, like two endpoints. It has uh, a consuming endpoint and a, and a producing endpoint. So we'll just uh, consume the messages uh, of the customer history uh, on one end and then we'll produce the predictions of the churn uh, to another end. But guess what? That doesn't exist. So uh, we decided to go on the drawing board and uh, take uh, a list of things we needed. So we wanted to at first have something, some framework that was easy to write. Um, and all the frameworks that we uh, checked out uh, that were for Python for connecting to Kafka were like a lot of boilerplate. So to get one endpoint working, you need to write around 50 lines of code, how to connect it, or all the other uh, customizations of the customers. And that's uh, like uh, quite too much to, to just have one consuming and one producing endpoint. Next thing, uh, the issue was none of those frameworks had any testability. So if you wanted to test your application, you had to do some magics with the Python and some, some mocking. And uh, at any point which you wanted to test something, it was like another whole uh, bag of uh, boilerplate code. Uh, next thing, uh, we wanted to have some automatic documentation generation. So when we uh, publish our model, we wanted to have some documentation to, to give to our customer and say to him, you have these two endpoints, you just send, send your uh, history and you'll get a prediction on the other endpoint. This also didn't exist in any other framework. We wanted to have our framework to have high performance because that's the point of Kafka. Um, and uh, yeah, we wanted, to, wanted the framework to be well maintained. Um, all of those things were an issue. Uh, maintainability was quite a big one because uh, four years ago, uh, people had some similar idea as us. Uh, I don't know if anyone is familiar with uh, Faust. But uh, it also works on a similar principle, principle as ours. But um, four years ago, nobody, they just finished their development. And uh, from that point until now, nobody touched the code. So that's like a big no-no to, to use something that's, that's like really, really old. Um, so we decided to use Pydentic uh, for our uh, encoding and decoding of the messages that are going through our Kafka queues. Uh, we decided to use AIO Kafka uh, as a backend for, for our application and we decided to use async API guidelines to generate the documentation for our final application. And let's 
take a look at how we implement the consuming. So, um, to consume some messages from, from uh, Kafka uh, with our application, you just define your, define your app, uh, you write down your, your functions, so you have on input data, you will get some messages that you expect in some JSON format, you do some processing, and uh, to, to just connect it to Kafka, you just need to use the .app.consume decorator and it will take care of everything for you in the background. So it will reroute your function to start consuming from the Kafka. And uh, yeah, if you want to override any of the parameters uh, from the AIO Kafka, we decided not to hide anything uh, from you. So if you want to like, uh, decide uh, whether you want to read the messages from the beginning of the queue or from the time when you connected to it, you can always use this to, to like, additionally customize your consumers. Um, and then we, then we uh, published it on Reddit and we immediately got some, some uh, feedback. So one of the first feedbacks was like, JSON is nice and everything, but we are really using Avro in uh, our Kafka queues. So we need to do some support for, for the Avro encoding and decoding. And uh, we did just that. So right now we are supporting uh, Avro and, and uh, JSON formats. We are planning to support protobuf, uh, but uh, yeah, so to, to use some any other decoder, you just define what, what you want to use and it's quite simple uh, to be implemented. So what about the producing? Um, it's quite similar to, to the consuming. So you write your function, uh, your function gets some, some, some inputs and uh, you write, uh, you, you type uh, which, which type you want to return, so we are returning a prediction, and then you decorate it with your Kafka app dot produces. Uh, what we'll, this will do is whenever you call your function in your Python code, uh, the side effect of returning the prediction will also be that this prediction will be, will be taken and produced to a Kafka topic. So when you have decorated it, you can use it anywhere where you like in your Python code, and uh, the uh, returning values will, be, will just magically appear in your Kafka. So also, if you want to encode it in Avro and not in JSON, you just define it in the encoder and or everything is nice. So what about the keys? Um, Kafka, Kafka is based upon uh, partitioning of the topics. That's why you can get a lot of parallelization uh, in, inside your uh, applications. But if you have some history of a customer, um, you, do, you want uh, your consumer to, that consumes from one partition to consume the, same, the, the data of the same customer all the time. You don't want it to be scattered around different partitions and Kafka solves this by using keys. So when you use keys when you're producing to Kafka, uh, the keys will decide on which partition uh, the data will be produced. So to produce with keys uh, in our fast Kafka, uh, you don't return just uh, a, your, your prediction, but you wrap it inside of a Kafka event object and uh, our Kafka app will recognize this, unwrap it, and uh, then produce your prediction to a Kafka topic using the key. So in that way you are you're sure that your events are not scattered around different partitions, but you have complete control on which partition you are producing. Um, so when we, when we implemented these decorators for producing and consuming, we decided you have an application, you want to test it somehow. So we decided to do something like this. So you have a tester, this is a context manager, it takes your Kafka application um, and uh, in the background uh, it analyzes it and creates uh, functions uh, that are mirroring your consuming and producing. So on, we, uh, on each endpoint where your application is uh, consuming, you can produce with your tester. And on each endpoint uh, your uh, application is producing, you can consume and assert uh, any kind of tests uh, with your tester. So at this case, uh, we are producing some message and we want to be certain that our prediction for like churn, churn probability is above 97%. Um, Quite nice thing about this, you don't need to, you need to care about uh, where Kafka is running. 
the tester will uh, run an instance of a Kafka broker for you in the background. So this, this part of code, these five lines of code, is all it takes uh, to, to test your application. But we had an issue. The community didn't like that we uh, are starting Kafka brokers in the background. Um, so we decided to uh, re-implement the tester and uh, implement an in-memory Kafka broker mockup, uh, which is like a Python implementation that uh, mirrors uh, what Kafka does. And uh, in that way, we can speed up your tests. You don't need to care about uh, installation of Java. You don't need to care about installation of Kafka on your PC. Everything is like Pythonic, and uh, you're you're quite fine without any other other language on your PC. So right now, it doesn't run an instance of Kafka in the background. It runs an in-memory our mockup of Kafka. So tests are quite fast. And uh, yeah, you don't need to care about any other process running in the background. But what if you want to uh, test your application with the real Kafka? You're, you're not really sure if uh, our in-memory broker is uh, correct or, or you have some integration tests with other, other applications. Uh, we decided not to toss the, the implementation for running a real Kafka in the background in the, in the trash, but you can, you can use the using local Kafka. This will, this will do the uh, already mentioned implementation, so it will run a Kafka broker in the background. And a quite nice thing, uh, so people at uh, Red Panda, so they, they are developing a Kafka-esque uh, broker, uh, contacted us, and they were also really unsatisfied with uh, the implementations of uh, consumers and producers in Python. And uh, they uh, asked us to, to collaborate and to create a guide for them on how to use our application to connect to their Red Panda. So to develop a guide, we need to develop a, a Red Panda uh, broker in the background. So if you want to use Red Panda instead of Kafka and connect to it and test your application with it, you can always use using local Red Panda for your tests. Next thing, so you're not now completely sure that your application is working and you want to deliver to your customer the documentation about your application. So it's quite a simple thing. So we have uh, fast Kafka docs generate and fast Kafka docs serve commands. Uh, these will take your application, analyze it and generate the documentation. Uh, it will be like in an HTML format so you can serve it by yourself or if you're uh, if you want to serve it quickly, you can, you can use our serve uh, command and the documentation looks like this. So uh, for, for our consuming, you have uh, a uh, sub subscribed documentation. Uh, you have the example of, of data that will come into your consumer and you have the uh, name of the topic that your uh, application is consuming from. For the publishing, uh, you, you are publishing to a predictions topic and you have an example of what you are publishing. So in this case, we are publishing some, some predictions about the Setosa species. Um, and uh, the last part of the documentation is like the general information about your, your application, so on which uh, servers you are connecting, uh, who's the author, who, who you can contact, and every other nice thing about uh, what the customer would like to know. Uh, we have also uh, developed a uh, GitHub action. So when you develop your application, you can, you can always use this GitHub action. So each time you, you publish something to GitHub, uh, the, the documentation will be automatically generated and published in GitHub Docs for you. So now you have the complete application, you have the documentation, it's tested, you want to serve it. So to serve it, you have a fast Kafka run uh, command. Uh, you, you need to, you need to uh, pass to it the, the module of uh, where your application is uh, located and the name of uh, the uh, symbol uh, where your Kafka uh, app is saved to. Uh, and this will take care of everything for you in the background. Uh, why is this nice? Uh, you can always define uh, how many processes you want to run your workers. So in this way, you don't need to care about uh, dockers or, or how many consumers you want or, or how, many, how many times you need to raise your application again and again. You just uh, define the number of workers that you want to use and uh, the run, run command will, will spawn multiple clones of your application in the background. 
So now the benchmarking. Uh, we uh, developed a benchmark decorator to, to like uh, ease the use uh, for, for us and also if you want to know how fast your application is. Um, and we used it to, to benchmark ourselves against the AIO Kafka because we are using AIO Kafka in the, in the background. Uh, and we wanted to know how much overhead we put on with our implementation. Um, in our case, this is around 30% uh, lower speed than like just the naked AI or Kafka. Uh, and this is the worst case uh, performance penalty because all of our consuming and producing functions are inside of them, there is like no operation. Uh, and this 30% uh, degradation is mostly because of the encoding and decoding of JSONs. Um, so some future steps for us. Uh, you can see we are we are quite busy on GitHub. We are having like one uh, merge uh, a day. We are working on like a two week uh, sprint uh, schedule. So each two weeks you'll get a new version of Fast Kafka. And uh, what are we planning to implement? So one of the first thing is uh, a tr transactional logic. So at the moment when you are consuming from Kafka and if you have some some huge uh, and lengthy uh, uh, like processing of your message and your application crashes uh, in the meantime, those messages will be lost. Um, and we want to add the logic that uh, only at the moment when your, your message has been completely processed, we will, will tell Kafka that we are like done with this message and we are ensuring you that you don't lose any messages in the meantime. Um, Next thing, we want to add uh, support for other messaging protocols. So people have reached out to us and said uh, they want to use RabbitMQ. And we want to add support for other libraries. Right now, we are built on upon uh, AO Kafka, but there are like Confluent and uh, Kafka Python. And we want to enable you to, to like use any other uh, like background that you want to use. Um, and of course, we did put some 30% overhead. We want to fix that, and we want to fix that by uh, rewriting uh, parts of our library in Rust to speed up all the process that, that's being done in the background. And yeah, uh, what's, what really matters to us is the community feedback. So a lot of uh, implementation that was done in the past month was focused on, on the feedback from the people that told us we need this, we need this. Um, and yeah, what's the point of this presentation? So we would like uh, you to come check us out on GitHub. Um, it's open source. Um, and uh, possibly if, you're, uh, if, if you want, uh, we would like you to collaborate with us on implementing additional, additional features for Fast Kafka. Um, so yeah, you can, you can find us on GitHub and you can also reach out to us on our Discord. So it's picking up on speed and people are talking to us and we would really like to hear from you uh, and your experience of using Fast Kafka. So that's it um, and I'll be really happy to answer some questions.